Whether by PC pod or pad, you're listening to and quite possibly watching Paid to Play. Thank you very much for your time and your megabytes of download limit and a warm welcome to the show. My name is Rob Farker, your host, and if you'll excuse me while I do a quick level adjustment. This week I am trying something a little bit different. I have wanted to do uh, a weekly show for quite a while. I think it will help... Uh, keep you guys uh, hooked in on a regular basis and the only thing that stopped me from doing so was the thought that trying to get enough chats in the can that I had something new to put up every week would drive me absolutely nuts so I decided to keep to a fortnightly interview schedule but the thought occurred to me a couple of weeks ago what I could do that would actually help keep the chats a little bit shorter because I know what it's like when I download a podcast episode and I see that it's something like 45 minutes to an hour. Um, it feels very frustrating. I sort of think, oh, God, it's going to take up a lot of my time. So um, my idea was to actually take out the segments that I put in sometimes before, sometimes after each episode, which are Money Where My Mouth Is, where I talk about my own efforts toward getting paid to play, because I think sometimes it can be fairly um, easy I chatting with other people about what they're doing. And yet I think it's good when you're listening to a podcast and you're looking for a bit of help and you're looking for a bit of advice that you know that the person who is running the podcast is there in the trenches with you. He's actually doing uh, the work to get paid to play themselves as well. So they kind of know what they're talking about. They know the sort of questions that you would want uh to uh, ask an interviewee about what is going on and what they're doing. Um, And pardon me, I'm umming and ahhing a lot. Hopefully I'll be able to cut these out for the episode. So uh, I am also doing this on video. And again, this is another reason to keep it short because I think about 20, 25 minutes of uh, a talking head can get a bit long. Anyway, um, let me date and time this. It is 7 o'clock in the morning on Sunday, June the 28th. Uh, I wanted to record this with as little gap in between when I recorded it and when I put it up on the web as possible, just to make sure that it is current. So let me get on. Um, let me get on and get stuck into money where my mouth is. So as I mentioned during my last episode, the chat with Joy Harjo. Paid to Play has met its first and currently only milestone on Patreon, which is 10 US dollars per episode. So as of now, my basic expenses for Paid to Play hosting and domain name fees are covered. I am thinking about a couple more milestones. There are some things I would like to cover off immediately, like, say, Skype credit and the annual cost of a P.O. box, so that I can make sure that when I do send messages out to my mailing list, it's actually got my personal address on them. Um, And I was going to wait until I had the payment in the can, but um, I trust... My third backer, Uh, he is a good guy, so I think it's not going to do me any harm if I announce maybe a few days early that my guest, um, pardon me, not my guest, that uh, my first $5 sponsor and currently the only backer, therefore, who gets three days early access to my chat episodes. I'm not going to do early access on these because, again, I want to make sure that I do the recording as close to time as possible, which pretty much rules out early access. So um, I'm happy to announce that uh, my $5 backer is... Tropicon is the Far North's first celebration of all things pop culture. Meet local and national comic artists at Kersplatz Artist Alley. Join the Berserk Cosplay Competition with prizes for grown-ups and youngsters. Check out the Glow World 9D Action Cinema. Challenge your mates to some retro arcade action at Luigi's Video Games. And there's still plenty more to see and do at Tropicon. Cairns PCYC, Saturday, July 11th. Doors open at 10am. Get your ticket at tropicon.com.au for $15 or at the door for $20. One child under 12 free with a paying adult. 
and if I've done my job right, there should have been a cut in there where I actually played uh, my commercial for Tropicon. Um, Charlie asked me to put a commercial together when he got a deal with Cairns Community Radio, 89.1 FM, to uh, uh, a trade for some tickets to actually get some airtime. So if you are a listener to Cairns Community Radio, you have probably heard my voice appearing every now and again for the last few weeks. Uh, and that means that this podcast is officially sponsored by a pop culture convention, which is fantastic. I have been happy to interview some of the folks who are going to be turning up at Tropicon um, to give everyone a little bit of an early taster of their personalities before they actually get a chance to meet them. And of course, because these are folks who are in the main getting paid to play or who are very much on their way. So uh, it is great working with Charlie to be able to bring these folks to you. He has been very handy in getting me in touch with them and having that in with them already being able to say hi. Um, I uh, work with Charlie um, for Tropicon and uh, I would like to be able to interview you for the show. It's been great in getting me access to those people. Unfortunately, there were a couple of guests whom I tried to get a chat with and who were very willing, but unfortunately, schedules didn't let me um, record the chats before the con, but uh, I'll see if I can get them afterwards anyway. And uh, once Tropicon 2016 gets underway and we start nailing down the guest roster for that, then uh, you can be sure that I will be getting some chats with those folks. Anyway... On other initiatives, uh, I have kicked off my Fiverr profile again. I first tried Fiverr, which in case you don't know, is a freelancing website where people sell gigs, short lots of work, uh, for $5 a pop. Uh, Fiverr actually takes 20% of that, so the freelancer only gets $4 per thing, but um, the whole idea is that you are sh kind of starting off with short snippets of work, um, things like maybe a hundred words of voiceover or a quick sketch or the uh, blurb for a novel, in my case. Those are the three Fiverr offerings that I've put up. I started on Fiverr just with book blurbs, and I did get a couple of gigs out of that. And then I kind of let it... Um, lie for a while, and I'll get into the reasons for that uh, when I start in on the overthinking segment after Money Where My Mouth Is. Um, I am happy to be back up there, and uh, it feels good to be sort of pushing my comfort zone a bit. I've had a nibble and uh, a bite, but I haven't been able to reel in that bite as yet, so we will see what happens. It would be a nice gig to land. It's writing the blurbs for about 10 books, so um, that's uh, around about before Patreon takes its, uh, uh, takes its cut. Let's see. Um, I'm actually just trying to work out whether I uh, did cost that right, but uh, anyway... Um, yeah, I have the feeling that I maybe uh, um, wound up calculating my costs a bit wrong. But look, I'll have to have a look at that. Maybe that's why I've not got that gig. Uh, anyway, aside from that, uh, my third avenue of work is the voice work project that I have with my friends in the States. I actually just yesterday interviewed them for an episode of the Pay to Play podcast, so I uh, got to talk to them a little bit more about what they're doing and um, what they hope to be able to achieve with it. It's going slowly. We are still discussing and they're still waiting on some money to come in at their end so that I can do some more work for them. But the interesting thing is we've been kind of getting together every fortnight just for a, a mutual brainstorming and semi-accountability session. I've found that I'm getting involved not just in doing the voice work, but also uh, they're presenting stuff to me, getting me involved a little bit in the creative process. They're working on a Patreon page themselves, and it has been great actually talking with them about story ideas and presentation, and it's been good fun. And one of the things that actually came out of that is um, I am not sure how much I have actually been telling folks about how I would like 
to help them get paid to play. And aside from me looking at the things that I enjoy doing, one thought was that I actually put something together that helps people, um, that is basically, uh, I'm losing my words here, I hope you'll forgive me, it's a, an actual paid to play product something that they can pay for and that I give them and actually helps them in their specific efforts to get paid to play themselves. And Birdie actually suggested, and yes, uh, that's her name, uh, Birdie Diamond, and uh, her husband Mike Diamond, who uh, have uh, the website Journey Birds Wonderland there on Facebook and Google, and they're working on their various projects there, so uh, please go and check them out. Again, as I've interviewed them for the podcast, I don't think it does any harm name-dropping them now. Um, we are still working on things, but she actually mentioned that uh, perhaps doing what we have been doing for the past few months, getting together online and just talking about the stuff we're doing and bouncing ideas back and forth, she reckons that's been invaluable. Thank you very much again, Birdie. And she suggested why not offer that as a thing? So I'm thinking about making that a Patreon backers reward for maybe uh, a 10 or $20 per episode level where you actually get, um, I organize a time where I'm going to be online and uh, it's maybe something like a Google Hangout uh, or a Skype chat and we get enough people together and we actually keep ourselves accountable and we sort of brainstorm stuff, see where we're at, um, talk about where we're getting stuck or the things we're doing and just um, maybe get some extra creative input from everyone else who is working on getting paid to play and engaging their own creativity and turning their own fun hopefully into things that other folks will pay them for. So that is definitely a thought and it's something that I am intending to work on in the next few weeks. So you might see some changes to the Patreon page coming up soon. Okay, on to a little episode I call, episode segment, I call overthinking. Uh, I wouldn't mind having a better name for it, perhaps one that starts with M, just so it works in better with money where my mouth is and mailbag. Um, this is my chance to maybe philosophize a little bit or editorialize about getting paid to play and maybe some of the things that get in our way in the hopes that it will help uh, anyone who is trying and hitting those stumbling blocks themselves. And I mentioned a little earlier on how I had taken a break from Fiverr. The reason for the break was kind of an emotional one. Have you ever had that feeling when you are thinking about ways of getting paid to play? That you have an idea and you sort of spec it out a little bit, turn it over in your head, uh, write some notes down, and then you sort of get this feeling like what you're doing uh, is, if you are looking at making this a pardon me, a full-time thing, you suddenly get the feeling that you are perhaps doing something that is not inspiring, that you are in a way making yourself another day job instead of if you're looking at trying to get out of the rat race and get paid to play full time, you're starting off on the wrong foot. You're not doing the thing that really, really inspires you. Or if you are, you are doing it in such a way that you're sort of turning it into, yeah, uh, another day job, um, another thing that you basically do during your nine to five and that you are going to be switching off of afterwards and feeling like you've not really engaged the part of you that really is unique to you, that you're not bringing that voice of your, yourself into the world. Um, you're kind of having to hold it back uh, because you're turning it into a job. Um, and it's a tough one. It's, I've discovered that you can try and, you can try like heck to reason your way around these things, but the real problem isn't so much the words, if you know what I mean. What I've just talked about, these are the, the thoughts that come to your mind when you get to that point. But it's not really those words or those reasons that you think of 
um, when you're in that situation that are the real problem. It's the emotion behind them. Um, and it's tough talking about emotions when all you've got are words. Uh, reminds me of my chat with uh, Joy Harjo uh, a week ago. Um, because if, you know, it, you've probably been in that situation where you've even talked about it with somebody and you've said, you've said those things, you've said, look, I don't want to be making myself another day job, that's why I stopped it. And they maybe try and apply um, reason to the problem and try and solve it that way and say, look, you know, why don't you try anyway? Give it a shot. You don't really know what it's like until you get stuck in and you do it for a while. You might find you enjoy it more. And they're all valid reasons. They all make sense. They're all logical. And yet you don't follow through on them. You don't take the advice. You don't press on because really they're addressing your arguments, but there is always that feeling behind, uh, in the middle of you, that causes the words, if you know what I mean, that um, gets translated into words and you're kind of dealing with uh, other people trying to deal with the translation rather than what you're actually feeling. And because it's the what you're actually feeling that maybe doesn't go away, that's why you don't follow through because as much as people are trying to um, reason the way through it, it doesn't really... You can't... I don't think you can actually deal with emotion, if you know what I mean, through reason. Um, in a way, it almost makes you feel worse because here are these people who are raising valid points and, you know, you almost feel worse about yourself. You feel, because they're applying these obvious pieces of logic and yet this feeling like, oh, that, that's the best impersonation I can do of the feeling, you know, that sort of little sick, sad pulling into yourself kind of feeling that's there um, and you feel worse because then you feel guilty about yourself you um, you wind up thinking less of yourself because hey why didn't you think of these things and um, uh, why when these people are applying logic in, instead of feeling positive about it and oh wow that's great maybe I should give it a go um, the feeling digs in a little bit more and um, kind of uh, goes on the defensive if you know what I mean um, and I think the only real solution that I've been able to apply to that and kind of why I got into Fiverr again was because when I started thinking about Fiverr, and it was because of some build pressure, I was kind of scared at the time, um, we'd just gotten a credit card statement in and because we've had some unexpected expenses this year, um, my wife Vicky needed to get a new pair of reading glasses because her current prescription was not working, uh, our microwave packed it in, so there was another $200 there, and we didn't, because we'd again had some earlier expenses in the year, um, my scooter uh, license so that I could get in and out of work a lot more cheaply and a little bit more quickly, um, wound up costing another four or $500 than I thought it was going to because uh, the state government made the Q-Ride training courses compulsory. Um, so yeah, we've, we've been kind of wiped out and putting things on the credit card and uh, we're sort of hoping that tax time will at least be able to cover off those expenses, but there are a couple of things in the offing that we've known we're going to have to pay for for a while and instead of going on those, um, the tax is going to be going on covering the unexpected stuff that's come up in the meantime and it's not really going to top up our emergency funding, so there's another kind of 12 months that we've got to wait for the next tax break or um, some other sort of change in my financial situation. So yeah, the fear was kind of building up there and I thought, all right, what the heck, I've got to do something about this. Let's try kicking things off with Fiverr again. And I started in, and again, I got that kind of feeling, that feeling that comes up when I think, you know, why am I doing this? Why am I turning, you know, my creativity and the things I kind of love doing into these um, gigs that maybe don't mean all that much to me, um, even though I hadn't really done anything with them for six months. How the hell would I know? And what solved it for me wasn't the logic, wasn't the reasons that anybody else could apply to it. It was noticing that emotion, being aware of it. Um, and it's kind of a, a skill that you have to develop. The main way that I've been able to do it um, is kind of through meditation. 
And by meditation, I basically mean the practice of taking lots of deep breaths and being aware of your breathing. Um, I hate the word concentration. I've never been able to do it all that well. And when people use that word concentrate, I've never understood really what it means. But meditation, I think, is the practice of concentration. Once you become aware of your breathing um, and how you're doing and just, you know, taking deep breaths in and maybe blowing out through your mouth for a little while, just, you know, um, getting it out forcefully until you calm yourself down a bit. Uh, you also become aware of what's going on in your head, um, not just the chatter and the random ideas that maybe keep popping up, but also, the um, again, the emotions behind all of that noise in your head, the things that are making your brain run a, a little bit more rev than it really needs to and crank out uh, all of that noise. And once you become aware of that emotion, you suddenly realize, this is what I'm feeling. This, this emotion, this feeling that I'm having is not pleasant. I don't want to feel like this. I'm sick of feeling like this. And so I started in on Fiverr again. I resurrected my old gig. I created two more. Um, I got involved a little bit on the Fiverr forums, which I need to engage on a little bit more. And I think that's another thing that maybe I uh, could talk about for a next episode, um, for the next off chat episode. Um, is about engaging with other people uh, because that's something that I've had a lot of trouble with um, and that I've withdrawn from. Um, but anyway, I think that's the main takeaway, folks. Uh, try and be aware of the emotions that stop you from trying new things and maybe the uh, things that maybe don't quite seem like the pedestal that you've got your idea for getting paid to play on in your head. Um, because nothing's ever going to compare to what you've got there or what you think the life is going to be like. So don't feel, don't feel like, I hate telling people what to do and what not to do. I prefer to talk about what I'm doing and how it's worked because um, at least that's why it's coming from me and you know that I'm not telling you to go and do something that I'm not doing myself. And besides which, if I'm doing a good job enough of selling this thing that I'm doing and explaining why it's helped me, um, I think you will be able to perceive the benefit to yourself and give it a shot anyway without me telling you to have to go and do it. Um, so yeah, that, that is the main thing for me. Breathing, becoming aware of the way I'm feeling when I hit roadblocks or get discouraged um, or get that little voice in my head telling me that why am I not doing uh, the big thing, the big idea that I've got on that pedestal and why am I wasting my time on these things instead and making myself what could be another day job because um, it stops you, it stops me from trying things and experimenting and maybe discovering um, what doing the thing that I am trying to talk myself out of is actually like and that it might well be if I approach it with the mindset, uh, with the right mindset and the right handle on the way I'm feeling about it, I might find it's rewarding, I might find it's fulfilling, I might find it's actually good bloody practice for my ideal paid to play situation, whatever that might be. So uh, we are now 23 minutes in, so let me get into the mailbag. Um, I did announce this a couple of days ago on Facebook and uh, on Twitter, I think I announced it on Twitter, I've got to do a better job of managing my social presences, I've got so bloody many of them. Um, so folks, uh, uh, you people who are listening to this, I would love to get feedback from you, and uh, I will, if you're happy with me to do so, please get in touch on my various social media presences or send an email to podcast at robf.com.au. Uh, make sure that you indicate that it is for the mailbag, and please let me know whether or not you want me to read your name out on the episode because, you know, it's going on the internet, it's a recording. Um, people will hopefully be hunting down my back episodes and having a listen. So, yeah, um, I would prefer that you were comfortable with making sure that your name is going into this. And I'm happy to keep you anonymous and just read your question and try and give an answer. Um, my first mail uh, item 
is from Adam Wolfs of Cairns, whom I've bumped into a couple of times at Curse Black Comics and Collectibles, and we've talked about various things. Uh, he started listening to the podcast, and actually, I might just see if I can pop on to Facebook, because I asked Adam whether it would be okay to pop our discussions up um, as a mailbag episode, and I sort of got him to clarify exactly what it was he was asking me about, and... Give me a couple of seconds. I had it written down, but I, uh, I'm just having a sudden attack of paranoia, and I kind of want to make sure I've got it right. Okay. Uh, where are we? So basically, Adam's question was, I had been listening... Um, I have, of course, been, as part of Tropicon, uh, chatting with some cosplayers. Uh, I have had Vicky Vic, who is one of the... Uh, four main guest cosplayers who's coming to Tropicon. Um, I did try to get uh, Twerk and Gherkin and Evie Dantes as well, and um, uh, unfortunately we weren't quite able to put it together. Uh, I did consider Liam McLeod. Liam, if you are listening to this, um, I'm looking forward to meeting you at Tropicon, and you do an awesome 11th Doctor, by the way. Um, the main thing was that I couldn't uh, quite identify how you were getting paid to play. I wasn't sure if you were, and I know that Twerk and Evie um, have or have had uh, print stores, and they've also got some interesting gigs uh, involving cosplay that I wanted to chat with them about. Um, anyway, Adam, your question was um, about whether cosplayers feel pressured uh, to show a lot of skin. Um, uh, you said because of the sexual sexualization of comic characters, and in a lot of ways the cosplayers needing to follow suit and almost one up each other. Um, that is a good question, and uh, it's yes, it's something that I've not uh, tried to address with my guests. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about asking them the question. Um, as I said, it is a legitimate one. Um, uh, although perhaps it's maybe more legitimate for uh, the female side of cosplay, and maybe that's why I didn't quite want to ask it, because I thought, well, maybe is this the question that I would ask of a male cosplayer if I got one on the show? And there are quite a few. Uh, if you listen to uh, my episode with Beefy a couple of months ago, who is a cosplay photographer, um, he name-dropped uh, several good uh, male cosplayers, uh, Amina Kataru and Willie Luffy Anders being a couple of examples. Um, and yeah, you find, again, maybe it's just that sad kind of gender divide we have nowadays. Uh, we don't ask them so much about uh, pressure to show skin uh, or do sexy cosplays or things like that. Um, but it is a pressure. I have been chatting on and off with one cosplayer who has been feeling a little bit frustrated with... Uh, her own print store and the sales that uh, she's got through that and uh, not showing skin for skin's sake or doing specifically sexy cosplays um, has kind of been uh, a... Uh, she has drawn her own line on what her standard is and she's not interested in compromising on it um, and the question, of course, has to be asked, you know, do you have to be kind of um, a, a sexy cosplayer in order to actually do lots of print sales? Um, it is a tough one. And, of course, there are those aspects of cosplay where um, you do. there is also that pressure, of course, from uh, fans of cosplay and people who follow cosplayers. I was in a uh, on a Twitch streaming channel, Twitch is a website at which people will actually live broadcast themselves playing video games. Uh, they set up a web camera like this one and they apply a piece of software to their computers which captures the webcam and also captures um, what is going on in the game on screen and sends both simultaneously to Twitch so you can actually have uh, you can watch this show where you can see someone playing a game and also watch them playing it. And um, there was one lady who I was in a Twitch stream at the time and I noticed uh, there were a couple of people, whether it was in jest or not, saying, you know, you should do it naked. And um, I'm kind of of the belief that while the negative aspects of a thing are worth discussing and worth being aware of, 
usually if you try and attack a negative it's kind of like what I was talking about with emotions just now if you try and attack a negative the negative digs in it reinforces itself it defends by going on the attack so you kind of wind up with more of it and um, I figure that if I start talking about those negative aspects of cosplay and when it comes down to it they are negative because of other people's perceptions um, there's not maybe a negative aspect so much as when it comes down to it, it's people acting in what is seen as a negative fashion and let's face it we're all the heroes of our own story um, we're all uh, in our own heads the victims the ones who are having to live um, with the pressures of existing and trying to figure out just who the hell we are and finding that balance between um, living in a way that does minimal harm to other people uh, but that is also true to yourself and let's face it uh, none of us are perfect none of us have um, clarity of vision in a way that you know we n none of us really understand uh, our place in a complex world we don't understand the other people in it um, I mean walk out your front door and sort of just take a look up and down your street uh, how many people live in those houses that you can see uh, how, what do they do every day what are the good and bad and um, righteous and evil things that they do uh, that we do even um, that simply you don't know about because you know you may be uh, on speaking terms with perhaps a thousand people you're on first name mates terms with maybe five to ten percent of that um, if you've got lucky you've got one special person in your life and you know how can you know um, what everybody else in the world has been through um, how can you sort of look at a person and really judge them when you don't know the harm that was done to them um, and by other people and the harm that was done to those other people going back and back and back I mean you know you can play, blame your, your parents for things but then they can blame theirs and they in turn can blame theirs and I feel like if I'm discussing the negatives I'm really I'm talking about other people and again there's that aspect of judgment there's that thing of telling other people what they what they should not be doing and they go well everything in my life up to this point has taught me that this is you know um, while it's maybe not necessarily a good thing it's the best that I can do um, in the time I've got with what I have so yeah um, I would kind of prefer in my podcast to talk with my guests about the things that they are doing and if they do encounter any difficulties then of course they do need to be talked about so that uh, you folks who are out there and are listening to these shows don't think that um, it's as easy as it looks because again um, one of the things I love about this podcast is it get, uh, gives you a chance to get behind people's end results and talk about the process that they go through and some of their struggles um, so if it comes up in conversation I will I, you know I will delve into it but um, I don't know I just feel like uh, especially when it does talk about something as um, uh, that involves as much vulnerability and as much judgment in today's society as um, uh, physical vulnerability and uh, displays of skin and sexuality and again when everyone's tastes are so ruddy different um, I'll have to do a link to an article I actually read at one point which exp you know people tend to say you know uh, why is there so much violence and um, so little sex on TV uh, or in media and why is it sort of considered um, why is sex considered such an evil when uh, violence is so prevalent and again why do we you know in, in indulge in one and not the other when the other can be such a positive um, and there was an article uh, on the escapist website in the experienced points column by Seamus Young who actually kind of broke it down and made it make sense as to why um, violence is so prevalent and yet sex and vulnerability aren't and it ultimately comes down to violence is easy to, it has a um, a narrow set of reactions to it whereas sexuality is so varied and so complex 
um, that there is no guarantee that you're going to be able to, with a specific lot of content, engage an individual that way. So um, did I just get off point? Perhaps a little bit. But yeah, um, it is kind of hard to then perhaps engage uh, a guest on that when it is such a tricky subject and one that could so easily be taken as with me raising it um, as less of a curiosity and maybe something that could be discussed as another attack. Um, so I would rather at least m let my guests be comfortable in sharing what they want to share and maybe leave, ra leave raising that kind of subject to them rather than me bringing it up with them, uh, especially if they're not comfortable with it and they don't really want to discuss it. Sure, I can edit it out. And uh, that's one of the powers that I have as the guy who runs this podcast. But still, um, yeah, uh, I would rather not go there. Um, if any of you cosplayers are, uh, if I ever get any cosplayers again on the show or back on the show and uh, any potential guest out there, you are listening to this and it is something that you would be interested in discussing and bring it up and you think it would be uh, worth pointing out to someone who is um, getting involved, what would like to get involved in cosplay and perhaps turn it into a paid hobby uh, as much as a straight up hobby, um, then yeah, I would be more than happy to discuss it with you and talk about how uh, the experience of trying to deal with other people's perceptions of um, how, how vulnerable you should be in cosplay and um, uh, perhaps the messages that people think it sends out then uh, yes, I'm more than happy to discuss that with you. But um, I think I will leave that aside as something that is on my list of questions, if you see what I mean. Uh, so I hope, Adam, that in my rambling way, I have kind of answered that question to your satisfaction. Uh, and ladies and gentle folks, if you do have any other questions, please get in touch. So that brings me to the end of this first Off Week episode. Thank you all very much for listening and putting up with my rambling. Um, I think I've tried to dump a lot of ideas out of my head and it was fun doing so, but uh, I think it might have got a little bit of confusing for you folks. If it did, let me know. I would appreciate some constructive feedback on this. But again, um, please, if you've got any questions um, that have been raised after issues, after episodes of my podcast, whether chat episodes or off-week episodes like this one. I would love to read them and hear about them. And please, uh, if you like this episode, share it on your various social media uh, avenues. There's the Pay to Play podcast page on Facebook that you can like, and I put everything up on there as well. Uh, I am on Twitter by Rob F. So if you like the podcast, please chuck the uh, tag in there just so I can... Um, uh, see you out there saying, hey, this is a, a great episode I listened to, and uh, I can thank you very much. Um, I am on Google+. Plus. It has a paid-to-play podcast page as well. And, of course, if you are watching this, then you are likely watching this on YouTube. Please subscribe to the paid-to-play podcast channel. Uh, you will find the links to that on the page for this video. And um, like and share this video if you dug it. Uh, so, next week... I intend to have my chat with Nii Rufino live. Uh, you, in case you've not heard of Nii Rufino, she is a comic book colorist and now artist. She works for a couple of major labels. Uh, a lot of her work has been done with the Zinescope comic imprint, but she is also uh, a keen supporter of independent efforts. She has a Patreon page at the moment where she offers tutorials and online videos and all that kind of goodness to help other folks um, do what they want and she's using it to fund a, a personal project of hers that uh, she would love to get off the ground and it was great chatting with her about what it's like to be uh, in the comic book industry, uh, what the convention circuit is like because she does a lot of conventions and um, Again, I'll have that edited together for this coming Sunday or this Thursday for my $5 an episode Patreon backers. So uh, thanks again to Tropicon for signing up at that level, and uh, I hope you enjoy the episode once I make it live. Uh, it was a request 
from Mal Simmons of Cursebutt Comics and Collectibles, one of the two folks I interviewed for episode three of this podcast way back in the day. Uh, so, Mal, I hope you enjoy it too. So, for now, this is Rob Farker frantically checking his uh, Evernote notes and uh, because he can't remember what his tagline is, but actually it does go something a little bit like this. Stand by your play. You never know where it'll take you. <laughs>